Hi, I'm Jonathan Bird, and welcome to my world. The ocean is full of fascinating animals and stories. I love to investigate and film these stories, and sometimes I get lucky. On a recent expedition, I learned about an amazing story of survival. And that story involves a 10-foot-long pilot whale that was stranded here on the Caribbean island of Curaçao. The pilot whale's name is Sully, and his story began in July of 2009 when he stranded on a Curaçao beach. But he was incredibly lucky to land there since it's home to the Curaçao Sea Aquarium, one of the few places in the entire Caribbean with the facilities and expertise to care for him. George Kiefer, the president of the Southern Caribbean Cetacean Network, was quick to respond when he got a telephone call alerting him to the stranded pilot whale on a beach only 10 minutes from his office. Uh, I could tell right away he was a pilot whale, but I uh, didn't know if it was a male or female. But Wow, well, it, was a, it was a skeleton. I mean, it was as emaciated as a whale or dolphin could possibly be and still be swimming. I mean, skin and bones. He had swam right out of the bay and then could come back in the bay again. So I don't think he was disoriented. I think it was one of those situations where, you know, this animal is physically incapable of keeping himself at the surface. So I think a lot of times these animals will strand because they just don't want to drown. You know, and if they can support themselves in some way in the shallows, that's what they're looking to do. The Sea Aquarium staff immediately sprung into action. Because Sully was too weak to stay afloat on his own, they used foam pool floats to help support his weight and lots of human helpers. Next, they needed to get some fluids into him because he was so dehydrated. Using a funnel attached to a plastic tube in his mouth, they poured fresh water right into his system. Although Sully lives in the sea and is surrounded by water, he can't drink any of it because it's salty. He gets all his fresh water in the fish and squid he normally eats. If he hasn't been eating, he hasn't been drinking either. Without lots of water fast, his kidneys would fail. Once Sully was hydrated, George decided to see if he would eat anything. The dolphins at the sea aquarium like herring, so George brought over a bucket of herring to try on Sully. He wasn't sure if the whale would accept food from him. But Sully was hungry and he gulped down the fish from George. He got so excited that they had a hard time keeping a hold on him. Soon they set up a makeshift pen, mostly to keep Sully safe from boats and curious swimmers. Sully had become a celebrity, and the crowd started gathering. Volunteers took turns not just helping to keep him afloat, but making sure he was safe. Within only a few days, Sully gained a lot of strength and looked like he was ready to swim by himself. She's swimming a little, Amy? Okay. Uh, Amy, drop off, Seuss, drop off. Yep, go. The flotation devices were removed one at a time, and Sully swam on his own. Good kick to the tail. Up until that point, the volunteers had been calling him the whale. George decided the pilot whale needed a name. You know, I started calling him Sully as a nickname. I thought, yeah, he, we should be calling him something other than the whale. So uh, I thought, well, okay, pilot whale, who's a famous pilot? Then I thought of the, the pilot who landed his plane in the Hudson and kept all 155 people alive uh, after falling out of the sky with no engines. I thought, that's pretty cool. Sully. Within a few weeks, Sully was strong enough that he was getting rambunctious. George felt he needed to get some exercise. So they trained him to follow a boat. 
They started by feeding him fish from the boat inside his pen. Once he was used to following the boat around for food inside the pen, they took him just outside the pen and continued the training. Sully learned very quickly and within a few days he would follow the boat way offshore at high speed. This daily exercise helped him get his strength back so he could return to the wild. By the time I arrived on the island three months later, Sully was back to full strength. He was being fed lots of fish several times a day. And every day or so, George would give Sully a rub down to get the dead skin off. Sully really enjoyed that. George would lie out on a board suspended above the water and Sully would come right over. Now this is the only time we touch him and that's to rub off all that loose skin. But nobody ever went in the water with the whale because they didn't want to acclimate him to humans. If he became too friendly towards people, they might never get him to go back to his own kind. He might just start hanging around the beach looking for people to play with. But one question that constantly lingered in George's mind was, why did Sully strand in the first place? What was wrong with Sully, and was he better now? I joined George one morning as he took Sully out for his daily exercise swim. He seemed completely rehabilitated. Sully could keep up with the boat easily. George decided Sully was strong enough to go back to the wild. So we took him straight out to sea and uh you know, we figured, well, once we get out there, we'll just sort of toss a few fish away from the boat and we'll leave him. And uh, we did that, you know, it took, a, took us about an hour offshore. We figured we we're at least 10 miles out there. Well, okay, it's deep open water. This is their habitat. Hopefully he'll come across some pilot whales and head on back. So we're coming back at full speed and that boat, I, I'm estimating you're talking about, you know, 30 miles an hour. So maybe 45 kilometers per hour, we're, we're moving. And so as we're, we're heading back towards the island, a few minutes later, one of the crew on the boat, there's two other trainers with me, Naomi and Junior, and Naomi says, I think I see him back there. What they discovered is just how fast Sully can swim. Even at full throttle, they couldn't lose him, and he followed the boat all the way back to his pen. Why wouldn't he go back to the wild? Maybe he didn't want to be alone. So George decided the only way they would ever get Sully back to the wild would be to hook him up with a pod of pilot whales. For weeks, every fisherman on the island and even the Coast Guard were keeping an eye out for a pod of pilot whales for Sully. Soon they found a pod. George and the Sea Aquarium staff led Sully out to the pod to make an introduction. Oh, go, go, go! Go, right, man, go! Yep. <laughs> yep. Go, man. Across, All right, thanks. Go, buddy, go. 
Unfortunately, Sully had no interest. He looked at the pod and swam right back to the boat. Once again, he followed them straight back to his pen. Clearly, Sully had no intention of going back to the wild, but nobody knew why. Unfortunately, Sully couldn't stay in his pen. First of all, it was designed to be temporary, and the volunteers couldn't watch him forever. And he was eating 60 to 70 pounds of fish every day. The Sea Aquarium couldn't afford to keep feeding him. They had to find another facility to take care of Sully. Some place with the space and resources to handle a hungry pilot whale. Fortunately, SeaWorld in San Diego offered Sully a permanent home. Soon, George and his staff were preparing Sully for his first airplane ride. Using a sling, they loaded Sully onto a truck carrying a custom-made tank that would keep Sully in the water for his entire journey, over 3,000 miles. Soon, the truck departed from the Curacao Sea Aquarium for the airport. Sully was loaded onto a FedEx jet for his $100,000 private charter directly to San Diego. George and several volunteers went along to help out. During the flight, they took turns pouring water onto Sully to keep him cool and relaxed at 30,000 feet. Six hours later, Sully arrived in San Diego, where they took him straight to SeaWorld. George was there too, and helped get Sully acquainted with his new home. Soon he was swimming around, none the worse for wear. Boy, Sully. In an effort to learn why Sully stranded, the Hub Sea World Marine Institute got together with the U.S. Navy Marine Mammal Program to test his hearing. Using sophisticated gear, they found the answer. Sully can't hear above 10 kilohertz. A normal pilot whale should be able to hear up to at least 100 kilohertz. So basically, Sully is hard of hearing. And without being able to hear those really high frequencies, he can't hunt using his echolocation in the deep ocean. Without being able to catch anything to eat, Sully was slowly starving to death. Since Sully's life depends on being fed, he can never go back to the wild. It's a good thing SeaWorld volunteered to take care of him. I head out to San Diego to visit my buddy Sully, and as soon as I see the Shamu Mobile, I know I'm in the right place. SeaWorld is known for their incredible dolphin and whale programs that bring thousands of people to appreciate life in the oceans. But what many people don't realize is that SeaWorld also has a huge rehabilitation program for stranded animals. <laughs> I catch up with Sully in one of the rehab tanks far from the crowds out front. He smiles for my camera. I wonder if he remembers me. We've been following his story. And okay. So this is sort of the completion of his Yay. story to, to be here. Soon I'm introduced to Jennifer Shorney, one of Sully's trainers. Oh, we all love Sully. <laughs> Sully is a special place in everyone's heart. Is he a ham? He looks, he's, he's hamming it up for the camera over here. He, yes, yes, he absolutely <laughs> is a bit of a ham. <laughs> <laughs> so t tell me, what, what, what are you feeding him? Um, Sully gets a wide variety of fish. Uh, he's actually, a big bulk of his base right now is uh, squid, but he's also getting some herring. He's learning to eat capelin as well as sardines. So he's eating wow. all different types of fish. Hmm. Can I try feeding him? Absolutely. Wow. So what do I do? Just a couple of fish? Yeah, just take a couple just fish and three. just toss them right on in. All right. Perfect. Hey, so here we go. And he's not particular about which way. Wow. Front or back. And you'll see him sometimes when he's rearranging the food, he'll definitely push out all the water, but you can tell he gobbled those down real quick. So 65 pounds a day. Yes. You're doing this a lot. A lot. This is what we How do. How many times a day? A lot. Oh, thanks. <laughs> thanks, buddy. Thank he says you. Hello. Um, we're we're going to be stepping down numerous, numerous times throughout the day to him. <laughs> Squid. Oh, yeah. 
Look at him. He's like, oh, 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 I want the squid, I want the squid. All right, here it comes. Yeah. <laughs> oh, Sully, you're so good. <laughs> Perfect. Here we go. Uh, Sully's favorite time of the day and things he absolutely loves. He loves to be rubbed down. So we're, we called it the line of love. He <laughs> loves it. And what we'll do is we're going to line ourselves up back there and you'll just see him. It's almost like a car wash. He'll go back and forth and back and forth and just absolutely love it. I get the chance to join in on the line of love and give Sully a little rub. Are you talking? Oh, baby boy. <laughs> just rolling around. I know. He absolutely loves it. It's your favorite time. Sully has put on over 200 pounds since arriving at SeaWorld. He's a growing whale, eating 65 pounds of fish and squid every day. See the skin coming off. I know, and it, it's really amazing. I mean, and there you go. Oh, look at that. Hi, baby boy. The ultimate. Yes. So as you can tell, he's a pretty happy guy. Well, how could he not be? I know, yes. right? He's got three he's... ladies giving him a rub there. I know. <laughs> I know. He's got some <laughs> Soon it's playtime. To keep Sully intellectually stimulated, his trainers give him a rotating selection of toys to play with. This one's his favorite. They call it the Sausage Links. He likes to grab it in his mouth and pull it underwater, which takes quite a bit of force. That thing under. I know, right? The buoyancy on that thing. That must have 50 pounds of positive <laughs> It's amazing, buoyancy. and it looks so easy for him, doesn't it? He also likes his beach hat. There you go. He loves to collect his toys and bring them all together. <laughs> He's like, this would be easier if I had thumbs. I know, right? But he does his best. He really is quite good at maneuvering them all. Oh, for a thumb. Oh, Sully. What's going on? You got your beach hat? Yeah. So he's quite animated. There he goes. Like the last one. Yep. There we go. There we go. Now we're moving. Now we got it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I got it. Yippee! So with his hearing damage, Sully just can't go back to the wild. And how lucky is he that all the way from Curacao, he made it to SeaWorld in San Diego, probably the best place in the world for him. And he's going to be taken care of for the rest of his life and get rub downs. One day, Sully will probably perform at SeaWorld and anyone will be able to go and meet him. That's a big smile. Sully owes his life to the people who vowed to save him, the staff of SeaWorld San Diego and the Curacao Sea Aquarium. To these people, this isn't just some stranded whale. He's Sully, the determined pilot whale who, like his namesake, refused to give up even in the face of overwhelming odds.